I'm here today with Julie Heimbach with Mayo Clinic, and uh, you gave a presentation yesterday um, on immunosuppression and liver transplantation. Tell me a little bit more about what your presentation was about. The focus of my presentation was on antibody-mediated rejection, which is an entity that is becoming uh, increasingly recognized in the field of liver transplantation. Antibody-mediated injury to allografts is something we've known about for a long time in other organs, particularly kidneys, but it is uh, definitely an area that is in development in the field of liver transplantation. So the evidence is um, mounting, um, but we're still not definitive in terms of the role. But the main points that I raised yesterday uh, focused on, first of all, the diagnosis, and we now have a very clear consensus uh, guideline uh, from the BAMF group on the diagnosis of antibody mediated rejection, and the criteria have now been very well defined as of 2016, uh, which will be a big help to the field. Um, still trying to understand more about the incidence and exactly how often is this occurring in the field of liver transplant, and then the biggest question of all is the management. Okay. So in looking at it from a patient perspective, what, what does this mean for patients as they go through the process of a liver transplantation? So I think the, the critical thing both for transplant physicians and for transplant recipients um, is that this is a rare situation. So antibody-mediated rejection in liver transplant is not a common problem. Cellular rejection is very common. Um, the focus of this presentation is on antibody mediated rejection. We know that this is not common, but we do know now that it's happening. Um, what we don't know for certain is how often, but we think probably in the range of 1% of all liver transplant recipients to 2%, maybe up to 5%, depending on the patient population, whether they were sensitized, meaning having antibody at the time of their transplant, or whether they had no antibody at the time of their transplant. So the patient population that is at more risk dip, you know, is variable, but for the standard risk patient, we think overall this is a rare complication. We do now have a relatively better way to diagnose it than we did previously with consensus that was developed. How we manage this is definitely still in development. We are trying to use um, strategies that have been used in other organs like kidney transplant to try to apply these same strategies to liver. The data for this is still quite limited. Okay. Well, great. Great information today. Thank you for taking a minute to sit down and, and talk about it. I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you.